I'm experimenting with octave fuzz circuits now, just getting started to observe how things work on the oscilloscope. So I have a fuzz guitar effect circuit board there that I made a couple of years ago, and the output of that goes into a transformer. Then there's a couple of diodes on the output to rectify it, and it goes off to a guitar amplifier. So there's jacks here for the guitar input on top, and an output to the amplifier on bottom. Those are going over to the breadboard. And in order to be able to switch this effect circuit in and out of the path between guitar to amplifier, so I can go straight to the amplifier and not use this, I have this stomp switch and power LED on a PCB made with today's sponsor, PCB Way. If I stomp on the switch, the light comes on, and at the same time, now, the guitar input goes through the fuzz circuit, then to the transformer for the octave effect, and then out to the amplifier. So it's a push on, push off. So just like any other guitar effect circuit, if you want this off, you want the switch to send the signal from the input straight to the output. When it's on, you want it to go into this circuit and then to the output. So these switches are three pole double throw. So you have three separate switches. You can go from one position to the other. One of those is dedicated just to the power LED. So there's a header here that goes to another circuit. We bring nine volts on the pin that goes straight to the anode of the LED. And when the switch is in the up position, the cathode is connected to ground through a resistor and it lights up to indicate the effect is in circuit. Then for the other two switches, the input jack goes to one switch, and in the up position, that is routed to the actual input of the effect circuit, the fuzz circuit in this case. So the guitar routes to the input of the effect. On the final switch, the output of the effect circuit is routed straight to the output jack to go to the next effect or to an amplifier. If we hit the switch again and all the switches go to the down position, now this LED cathode is not going anywhere, so it's off. And we just route this ground over to this spare header pin, just in case we might have a circuit that we can use to detect when ground is present and the effect is supposed to be off. Maybe we want to do something with that. At the same time, the middle switch is now connecting to ground, so that goes to the input of the effect circuit. So we're tying the input to ground, giving no signal in, and the input jack runs over here. So if that's a guitar or another effect output, there's an audio signal coming into the jack. It runs up to this other switch, which now is in the down position, and connects over straight to the output jack. So the input jack routes straight to the output and we bypass the circuit altogether. The effect circuit output just goes nowhere. It's open circuit. So that's how we can bring this effect circuit in and out of the signal path between a guitar and an amplifier. The idea of an octave circuit on a fuzz circuit is to take this somewhat distorted signal and depending on the waveform coming through here, we can sometimes hear a copy of the signal one octave higher at the same time. So it gives sort of a harmonic trait to the sound, sort of like when you get an extra tone from feedback coming out of an amplifier if you're standing in front of it and it's loud enough. It'll start creating this extra tone that might fade in or fade out, and it just adds character to the tone. I'll put links in the description to all kinds of information on this, including different circuit structures. I'm using a transformer, but there's other circuits that use just transistors. And I'm putting signals on the scope. The top trace is going to be the input of this transformer, so the output of the fuzz. The bottom trace is the resulting signal out of this octave circuit. So on the top, we see what's going in, and on the bottom, we see if anything is changing from this octave circuit. And when I have the switch in bypass mode, only the bottom trace on the scope has a valid signal. The top trace might look like a bit of a distorted square wave or something because it's coming off of this transformer input and we're not really using this fuzz when we're in bypass mode. 
So only look at the bottom trace in bypass. So here's how a guitar would sound in bypass mode, just going to the amplifier, then having this effect turned on, but no octave, just the fuzz. And then I have a switch here to turn on the octave feature. And we can see and hear the differences. So here's the schematic of the original fuzz circuit. The output of the fuzz used to come from this capacitor over to this volume pot and on out of the board. So now I have this octave circuit inserted. It's a transformer with a 600 ohm impedance on one side and a 1.5k on the other side. And then I have a couple of shot key diodes just to have a low forward voltage drop right here. So what we're doing is taking the slightly distorted guitar signal and on the 600 ohm input side we're not using the center tap we just have our signal and then we are grounding the other end on the 1.5k impedance side we're grounding the center tap and then we have two output signals so i have a switch here so i can bring this diode in or out of circuit when the switch is open all we have is this signal to ground through this diode so the frequency will be the same as this input signal. And when we close the switch, we're bringing this other diode in. So we're doing full wave rectifying. And now we end up with twice as many peaks. So we have twice the frequency. And musically, you double the frequency, you go up an octave. So I can bring the octave effect in or out of circuit by bringing this diode in or out of circuit. So some characteristics I have observed with this sort of circuit, you don't always just hear a duplicate copy of the signal being pitch shifted up by an octave. When the signal is quieter, and especially when it becomes more toward a pure sine wave, then you can start to hear the octave effect and you can see it more clearly on the scope as well, where the bottom trace has a doubled waveform compared to the top input signal. And tying in with that, on a guitar, it's harder to get the octave effect to show up on notes below the 12th fret, probably partly because those are louder signals and it takes a while for those to fade out and then you can hear the octave effect. But as soon as you get toward the 12th fret, you can really start hearing octaves more prominently. And because it's easier to get the octave tones when the signal is more cleaned up, I'm finding it works better when the fuzz going into this is at a lower gain. So I've got this set almost clean sounding, but it does contribute some distortion. But once you generate your octaves, if you then take that and instead of going to a clean amplifier, if you put that into a distorted amplifier, it enhances the whole effect of having the octave. It works better on single notes, but if you play two strings or more at the same time, you can still get interesting effects, including sometimes an octave, depending how the waveform develops, and you can get some ring modulation type extra tones going on, kind of like a chimey bell, it depends how you use it. So the goal is not to just have a doubled pitch copy of the whole signal, you just want it to be there as an enhancement effect that kind of comes and goes depending on the characteristics of the signal. So here's some multi-note demos and you can see on the scope as the bottom trace the output signal gets cleaner looking and quieter the octave effect starts to come in
And here's some single notes in the 12th fret area where the octave is more prominent, as well as down in the lower note area where the waveforms are more complex and louder, so you need more time for those to fade out and clean up before you can hear the octave. 